Real quick before we get into the meat of the video, I just want to let you guys know this video is brought to you by Carl's Bait and Tackle. They are the same people behind Mystery Tackle Box. All it is is an e-commerce site where you'll be able to buy different lures and different fishing gear that you might see in your Mystery Tackle Box. It's an e-commerce site where you can get all of those things. Also, Carl's Club is a thing that you can join. It's kind of like Costco where you'll get things at a cheaper price, close to wholesale price by being part of the membership and you get things at a cheaper cost than you normally would. New members get 50% off their first purchase and there's also a sweepstakes you can join. I'll leave the link below where you can win $500 to go on a shopping spree and get all the fishing gear that you want. Easy as cake, I'll leave that link below. Back to the video. What's happening, you guys? Lost in here. So, we are back, baby. Back from Columbia, and then once I got back from Columbia, I spent about probably a week and a half, two weeks in Alabama and Georgia, actually just spending time and visiting some of my family, and it was nice to kind of unwind. But we are back, back at home, and it's time to do some fishing. This morning, threw the top water around for a bit, but nothing too exciting. So, we're gonna throw some artificials around. Might throw the fly a bit, gonna fish some bridges and docks you know I've had a few people comment asking if I would do some dock fishing I read the comments I literally read all of them for better or for worse some are great some are terrible but I appreciate all of them the same so we're gonna do some fishing today and see if we can get back into the groove of things I'm excited hopefully we can hook into something good Oh, a little snook. That was not what I was expecting at all. <laughs> Ooh, okay. I definitely was expecting a little tarpon to jump out of the water there. Not a uh, little snook. It's okay. Gotta get started somewhere. All right, little bitty 15-inch snook to start the morning off right there. We won't talk too much about him, but it's nice to be catching fish back at home. And one of my favorites to boot right there. Maybe we can catch a big one of these today. That would be epic but we're gonna keep throwing the fly looking for some tarpon okay I'll be the first to admit I'm all over the place today so nothing today has really gone how I want it to it's just kind of been an off day it's my first day back I'm just scramble brain but I'm digging through my box and I see these tiny little crabs in my box and I'm like I don't even remember buying these things to be honest I don't really know where they came from but there's these tiny little crabs right here like the size of my thumbnail and I thought wow that looks super interesting and fun to throw so that's what we're gonna do I am gonna tie on some 15 pound leader onto my spinning rod and we are gonna throw some micro crabs and see what we can find I think it should be fun up on the cooler trying to do a little bit of sight casting with little crab man sheep said right here in this little seawall pocket okay I see him That probably scared him, yeah, for sure. Sheep's head, I threw the crab instantly down onto it. Oh, he definitely freaking tried to eat it right there. I may have set a little too early on them. All right, all right, at least we know the look at it. I literally threw that at the sheep's head to the right of him and he saw it go down and just instantly beamed down on it. And I can already see another one actually tailing on this little seat wall over here. We're gonna get a little closer, and just try to make a really soft pitch kind of in his eyesight and see if he'll go down and munch on it here. I don't see him yet, but I know he's over here. Ooh, that is a big sheep's head. Oh, he saw the crab. is nice big sheep's head man that was so sick oh gosh that was epic I know I shouldn't be this hyped about catching a sheep's head but that was too cool I need a toad <laughs> Sheep's head. That 
is a tank of a sheep's head right there and an artificial too. That is actually probably my first sheep's I've ever caught on artificial and he is a brute. I mean, you know it's pretty cool when a sheep that's pulling out drag on you and you sight casted him with a artificial micro crab. That is sick, dude. Look at the mouth on this thing. One of the gnarliest mouths in the fishing world right there. Have you ever even seen a creeper looking mouth? Ready to go. Now, something about sheep's head. They're actually one of probably the best eating fish in the world, or at least in Florida. But you guys know me, I don't keep too much that I catch. But awesome, awesome fish. Crab working, I've thrown about six casts with it and already caught a big hoss. I'm stoked right now, man. So stoked. Putting a little scent on it right there. I think that's gonna make the difference. Big snook in front of me. You want a crab? Oh my gosh, dude. I hate my life. If I would have picked up the fly rod and threw that at that thing would have eaten the second that crab touched the water, he like dolted towards dolted, jolted towards it, and then was like, oh, it's just a crab. Oh my gosh. Why am I an idiot? What is going on? There's like hundreds of catfish up here. Okay. There's a bunch of catfish right here just for the sake of why the heck not? I'm gonna throw a little crabby patty up in there, a little micro crab. We should get slurped pretty dang quick, to be honest. Not that's any impressive feat for me to catch a hardhead catfish. They literally are like the garbage can of the sea. But and slurp. <sighs> literally hit the water, let it sink for about 10 seconds, and big and came and ate it. There's actually some pretty big freaking catfish down there, man. Yeah, we're catching big cats and sheep heads today when they pull out a little bit of drag on you. Believe it or not, I'm actually semi a fan of catfish. Maybe not particularly hard head catfish. Gaff top catfish actually put a pretty good fight though. This thing, I will do my best to just release it. Because if you guys aren't aware, catfish have spines on them on their pectoral fins and on their dorsal fin that hurt so bad to get stuck with and how do i know because i've been stuck about eight or nine times because i do this i try to unhook them and most people just cut the line on them oh. right. you know for a second i'll talk about it because i don't know if i ever have before catfish Hardhead and gaff top catfish, two of the main ones that you'll catch in salt water. If you're not aware of it, for maybe my younger viewers or people who just are new to saltwater fishing, they have barbed spikes on their dorsal fin and pectoral fin, like I was saying. And it is so painful to be stabbed by one. It's not gonna kill you or anything like that, but it just, wherever you get stabbed, it makes you basically go numb, but in the worst way possible, where there's this huge radiating numbness in your hand. That's where I've been stung like eight times in the hand, and the little ones always get you more than the big ones because they're so squirmy. But do your best not to get stung by them, or stabbed by them, I should say, but they're not gonna try to hurt you. Just be careful when you handle them. I like to put their spikes up, and I get my hand rested behind their dorsal spikes pushed up so they can't get you, and that's a safe way to handle. All right, real quickly, gonna be talking about what I've been throwing most of the day here. So, seven foot six E6X inshore G Loomis medium light rod on a 4,000 size Shimano Stratic. So this has become my all around inshore rod that I use basically for everything. After a bunch of my rods got stolen and I lost my 3,000, my 1,000, one of my 4,000s, my whole arsenal basically, I got a 4,000 because that bridges the gap between everything very well, at least the best in my opinion to handle a possibly 40 inch snook, but I can still have fun catching a five pound sheep's head like we did today. 15 pound braid, that's just what I like to use for most of my inshore applications. You know, once I get a 3,000 or 2,000 for light line stuff, I might put 10 to eight pound braid on it for like trout or redfish, something like that and then 20 pound fluorocarbon. Now 20 is even a little heavy for what I was doing today, throwing this tiny little crab here, but it's not too bad. I would maybe ideally would have like 15, but 20 seemed to do just fine. 
that is the setup and this is what I use for just about everything and it's a great setup couldn't say enough good things about it I think there's a handful of snook underneath this dock here at least I saw some before I got to wrangle a lovely catfish there's one can't tell which way he's facing there's actually two of them closing in on it from both sides Oh gosh, that's not what I wanted. Okay. All right, well, when I turned around, a barracuda came out and ate that fly. Ugh. <laughs> Oops. There was two snook up under there, and I saw the cuda swimming around, but when I tried to strip the fly out of the water, he came up and ate it. Of course. Hey, a little sporty on the eight weight, even though this is a shrimp. I don't understand how this thing is not, my line is literally through its mouth, like I just, I don't understand how this isn't cut. Oh, and now my fly line is also inside this thing's mouth, this is just going tremendously. <laughs> what a freaking, okay, there we go, got it back. That was terrible. Alrighty, I think that'll about do it. Let's wrap things up. That is it, we are done. A little bit of a different video, fishing for sheep's head, something I don't normally do very often, but hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I think that's something I really wanna start incorporating into my videos more, is doing different things, having variety. So maybe that's fishing for different species, fishing new areas, fishing in unique ways. Maybe you guys wanna see diving videos or exploring or cooking, I don't know. You let me know what you guys wanna see and leave those in the comments below. Also, a question for you guys. Live streaming on YouTube is a thing. Some way I wanna be able to get back to you guys and connect with you on a more personal note and give you more content. Would live streaming once a week or maybe a few times a week be something that you are interested in? It could be while I'm out fishing, it could be while I'm at home in my office working on gear, or arranging or editing. It could be whatever you guys want. I wanna hear your feedback below, so leave some comments down below and let me know what you think video ideas and your thoughts on live streaming if you enjoyed the video make sure you leave a like subscribe to the channel if you're not already i appreciate you guys so much until next time peace